Hello everyone and welcome to Battle for States. I'm Maria Shakil. Like most recent elections, OBC politics has taken center stage in the states going to polls next month. Let's begin with Madhya Pradesh. OBCs form 48% of the voters in the state. The Congress has promised that it will provide 27% reservation to the OBCs and government jobs if voted to power. So far it has fielded 62 candidates from other backward classes. The OBC the BJP in fact which is the ruling party here says it has walked the talk on OBC representation. Chief Minister Shivraj Singh Chauhan is from the community. The BJP has called Congress concern for the OBC is an election gimmick and had doled out how it is the party that has given OBC's maximum representation right from the OBC prime minister in prime minister modi to number of mps and mlas the party has now to poll bound rajasthan the congress is trying to lay the ground for its OBC pitch and it's doing so in other states as well including chatisgarh and telangana in the run up to 2024 The Ashok Gehlot led Rajasthan government on 7th of October announced that it would be conducting a caste census on the lines of the exercise recently completed by the Nitish Kumar government in Bihar. Now to Telangana. The ruling BRS had got 50% of OBC votes in the state. This time the Congress has fielded 12 candidates in the first list of 55 announced so far. The BJP could announce an OBC leader as its CM candidate is what sources say. In fact in BJP's first list 20 of 52 are from the OBCs. The BJP is countering also with its welfare push and schemes like Vishwakarma that were launched by the prime minister recently to benefit the OBCs. So we ask on the show tonight who will get their caste abc right when it comes to the obc and let me bring in the reporters first harsha kumari singh is joining me from uh, jaipur anurag dwari is live with us from bhopal anurag coming to you congress has always been on the margins of obc politics um, is it more of a slogan than in madhya pradesh because uh, its faces leading the campaign aren't obc while on the other hand bjp can claim that it has shown it through the representation in leadership yeah we have seen uh, in uh, past uh, so many days uh, congress is batting for the obc population they are saying that uh, they will give them equal representation but if you closely look at uh, the list of candidates the bjp has given almost 30% while two seats are on hold and the congress out of 230 has given tickets to around 27% of obc candidates here in madhya pradesh while rahul gandhi in his press conference is also asking like how many obc journalists are there but if you see their list they have given representation to only 27% uh, of obc candidates while the backward class commission in madhya pradesh says that the OBC bc population in madhya pradesh is more than 48% bjp is uh, continuously asking the question that in the past 20 years they have given three powerful obc chief ministers in madhya pradesh including chief minister shivraj singh chauhan and uma bharti uh, so they are asking the same question to the uh, you know uh, congress because uh, in the cabinet here also around 20, uh, 25 ministers holding the powerful portfolios are from the obc community though the congress has made several promises in their manifesto which includes uh, uh, they, they have that uh, dedicated several pages to the backward classes uh, promised implementation of their rights and set up an equal opportunities commission to prepare a program for their overall development and apart from that the party has also promised Uh, appointments and nominations of obcs to the constitutional uh, bodies in proportion to the reservation and also government departments they have also said uh, that they will implement the remaining recommendations of the mahajan commission and uh, uh, they will ensure uh, you know that all hurdles will be removed in implementation of the 27% reservation to the obcs and apart from that uh, they have also said that it will be easy to guess Uh, get caste certificates and also promises to build huge statues of Savitri Phule and Mahatma Phule in Bhopal. And apart from that, uh, community halls in areas dominated by OBCs 
roads, educational institutions and stadiums uh, will be named after different OBC leaders. Uh, soft loans up to rupees 1 crore and a marking of 25% commercial and industrial plots for uh, the entrepreneurs from the OBC community. And uh, they have also said uh, that they will increase the OBC creamy layer limit to, uh, to annual income of rupees 12 lakh. So clearly uh, the Congress is also trying to woo the OBC community and the OBC voters but the BJP is time and again questioning the representation of OBCs be uh, in their list or uh, you know when the Congress was in power. A quick word from you Harsha as well. Um, how are uh, the OBC uh, you know arithmetic playing out in the state of Rajasthan? Yes, absolutely. So you have to understand how crucial and critical is the OBC vote bank. And Ashok Gehloth, in fact, made a pitch and outreach to this vote bank on the 9th of August when he announced in uh, Baswara in front of Raj Rahul Gandhi that, uh, you know, the Congress will increase OBC reservation from 21% to 27% because the OBCs are about 50% of the population in Rajasthan. Uh, not only is the OBC vote bank very important for the Congress, but also the BJP has constantly, if you look at Vasundhara Rajay's whole uh, personality, her profile, she also harps on the fact that she is Jato ki Bahu and Gujaro ki Samdhan. So that, you know, brings together two critical uh, uh, segments of the OBC vote bank, the Jats who are about 12 to 16 percent according to estimates and the Gujars who are about 8 to 9 percent. Opinion makers in the OBC vote bank, uh, uh, they can be game changers in any election and also they are, these segments, these castes are also politically dominant and politically uh, upwardly mobile. So the OBC vote bank actually is uh, is really, really critical uh, for any any election. Of course, in the OBC vote bank also, uh, the you know, uh, within the OBC vote bank, the, 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 uh, the segments within the OBC vote bank are also important. Now, if you broadly look at the ticket distribution, about 40 to 35 percent uh, is what both parties have given so far in this list. Also, if you see Ashok Gehloth himself, a Mali, uh, you know, he's he's also an OBC. He talks about how the Malis are uh, sprinkling across um, across Rajasthan. They are not concentrated in any one particular region. But he says that you know his caste is not that dominant, and yet. He definitely pitches himself as an OBC leader. And as we were talking, the political narrative, uh, Vasundhara Rajay's grammar, as far as her own personality is concerned, is, is not uh, her Maratha pitch, is not the fact that she comes from the Sindhya royal family, but that she is from the royal family of Dholpur, Jat, uh, uh, OBCs, and also, um, you know, her daughter-in-law is a Gujar. So clearly, this is a, a vote bank, which is very, very important to both political parties. It's also one of the less talked about vote banks, it's also seen a lot of agitations for reservation in the recent past. Uh, for example, the Jats raised the issue about the anomalies within the OBC vote bank which had to be sorted out. The Gujars have also agitated for a larger share of the pie uh, within the OBC quota because they say the more dominant communities are occupying their share. So these have been various uh, reasons in, the, uh, in this entire, um, uh, you know, in this entire political narrative. Uh, uh, there's also a jostling for space within the OBC vote bank. So when parties give tickets uh, to OBCs, they also see uh, within the, the OBC vote bank which are the segments they are reaching out to, which are the communities they are reaching out to, especially the political influential committees, uh, communities like the Jats and the Gujars. All right, Anurag and Harsha, thank you so much uh, for joining us. Let me bring in my guests. Rohan Gupta is the spokesperson of the Congress. Alok Watts uh, representing the BJP. We have Professor Badri Narayan, political analyst. Rashid Kidwai, senior journalist. And Smita Gupta, senior journalist. Rohan Gupta, beginning with you, the Congress Social Coalition in most states has been largely about upper castes, Dalits and Muslims. So this OBC reach out, would it be seen as an afterthought? I don't think so. It's about afterthought or it's only about politics. See, at the end of the day, even your screen was showing the numbers that OBC have always supported BJP. And what we are saying is very simple. When Congress government was there, the, the, the caste census was done. We have been requested BJP government for last, last nine years to release that census. 
why they are not doing it if they are for obc if they feel that obc support them if they feel that pm comes from obc uh, caste why they are afraid of releasing the caste census at the end of the day congress always believes that the benefit of the government policy should be in the proportion of the population that is what we are saying so we are not, not just talking about obc or we are looking at obc as a board bank hmm. we just want the right which should be given to obc that should be given and rahul gandhi ji has given the figures that out of 90 secretaries if only 3 4 secretaries are from obc community what kind of uh, justice bjp is doing to obcs and bjp always says that obc supports bjp and then it is more injustice to obcs by not releasing the caste sanctions and ensuring that they don't get the benefit of government schemes okay will you respond to this alok what's for all that yes, okay. you may have uh, said in terms of vishwakarma and the prime minister's own caste being of that of an obc when it comes to releasing the caste census you certainly are on a back foot let me tell you one thing at the very outset what the congress says it does not do it i'll give you a glaring example they made a hue and cry regarding the women reservation bill not incorporating obc and the muslim women they had brought it back from years ago got it passed also through the rajya sabha it was plundered in the lok sabha no, by no, the no i i know about the history of that uh, bill let so me, let's let not me, talk let about me, it let let's focus on obc let me, let's let focus me on obc because point. i want to please, understand what exactly please, is the bjp's please, game plan over here let me come to my point yes they were talking about obc quota in this bill hmm I want to ask them the bill they had brought was this quota incorporated that time in their bill if they have the proof tell them to show it to me okay but you are completely uh, you know moving away from what i want to discuss no, on this show this and is, i want to understand from what, you rashid kidwai no, no, come no. in on this this is this rashid, is what is your talking thinking. specifically about the state of madhya pradesh because you understand the po- uh, politics of that state and you come from that state See, uh, help us understand are, are, how is they, the obc they, they, pitch playing out Gandhi, for various are, political are, parties the are, bjp are, and the congress the and because it's a bipolar contest there Will you, will you allow me? As you have said in your opening remarks, I that the BJP always had a very you know, strong opinion. Yes, please. Let's have Rashid on the screen now. Please, please yes. it's not your turn. Please keep quiet. It's not your turn. Yes, go ahead, Rashid. Hmm. So, as Maria, you had said in your opening remarks, the BJP always had very you know strong presence among the OBC voter. Data also shows it, but. Congress this time by asking for caste based survey or caste based census has you know set a cat among pigeons. The BJP has not been able to respond. They are saying that how many MPs they had, how many you know uh, ministers they have, what is the percentage and you know representation they had. But that's all about past. What about future? You know backwards have a and like any other community they have some kind of aspiration. If Congress is saying Pichla Magya Swami start, then it finds attraction. And in the BJP, Maria, let me explain it to you. It was evident in 2018 election. and also the upper caste and the obcs have a you know kind of there is a social confrontation so last time when shivraj singh chauhan said koi michael lal reservation nahi hata sakta it had an adverse impact uh, you know among the upper caste voters and then you know shivraj ji had to do a balancing act so this time around the bjp is not been able to take a clear position is it for uh, caste based reservation or is it not for caste based reservation and that's the biggest problem and i think at the state but, like but rashid Bangladesh, my question is, is that here is a chief minister of four terms who is an obc the prime minister is from the obc community the bjp is saying that in terms of representation they have maximum number of mps and mlas from the obc in comparison to other political parties then is it not about the real walk the talk here because on the other hand mr kamal nath is not an obc neither is his partner this time around which is digvijay singh so state's yes. leadership I'm representation glad. is very clear while on the other I'm hand glad. you have a different picture i am glad maria you raised this point but where is shivraj singh chauhan if you come to bopal you see the all the posters are saying apki bar bhajpa ki sarkar what where is shivraj singh chauhan his, his, his uh, poster is not there his slogans are not there all the success of you know ladri lakshmi and ladri bana and kanyadan projects there nowhere visible so bjp is not owning up that you know uh, the legacy of shivraj singh chauhan and that's a biggest problem and more so voter is in a way voter tends to be little you know ambitious greedy whatever you want to call it 
So if the Congress is saying the future. clearly there will be reservation which may go up to, you know, beyond 50%, 60%, 70%, this is very appealing, Maria. This is going to make a huge impact. Okay. So the BJP doesn't really have an answer to caste uh, census, is my question to you, Alok Watts. Let me tell you one thing, Maria, you're not allowing me to speak and you're not allowing me Please to go complete ahead, make my... Please go sir. I want to say that what the Congress promises, it doesn't do it. Today, we have got 44% votes of the ABC and we have 27% OBC represented by us in the parliament and 29% ST and STs. They are rudderless. They don't have anything to go to the public, to go to the people. So they are just trying to snatch something out of the blue. But this will not work. Simply, it will not work. They're all leaders who are being portrayed in Madhya Pradesh are all from the upper caste. Why don't they portray an OBC leader there as their chief minister candidate? If okay. They are, if they are so Will you respond about to this, people? Rohan? See, Maria, you have been asking a very basic question to them. Why they are not able to release the caste census? And uh, we have said that out of four, three CM of Congress party are from OBC committee. So question is very simple. If they are for OBC... If Why they feel don't that OBC you portray an OBC as a yeah, I never spoke in between you. Let us not do that. Yes, let's when have uh, Rohan now on the screen. Alok Watsji, uh, we do not l uh, like uh, leaders talking over each other. Let's have a very Number dignified debate, he, please. He was, he was talking while I was speaking. Go ahead. And you didn't interrupt him. Am I audible? Yes, please. Go ahead, Rohan. Yeah, I am saying very simple thing. We are talking about the larger macro picture. We are saying simple thing. If the BJP is saying that they are for OBC and OBC has supported them, what is stopping them from releasing the caste census, which was done at the time when Congress government was there? Number one, why they are not able to do caste census even after two, two and a half years COVID has been passed? So it is very clear that what they say and what they follow or what they, uh, uh, you know, put on ground is completely different. They are in government, they have to reply. And when he talks about Mr. Rahul Gandhi, he clearly said, yes, in women's bill, we should have put OBC and we support that. So let's come together. If you are and our thoughts are same, rather than questioning what we did in past, what you did in pa uh, past, let us come together and release the caste census. Let us have the opportunity, the debate, where OBCs, who are the largest population, they should get the maximum benefit of the government schemes. What, BJ, what stops BJP from doing this? Why you are questioning Congress party or other parties for the past? We are here to support to you. We are here to come together. And okay. again, in name of in name of women reservation bill, you have given two uh, sticks. One is caste census and one is delimitation. Why okay. you are doing that? But, so but the Rina point Rana. here is Maria. Yes, yeah, whatever Rana. they say, yes. they don't follow it. They just say it for the purpose of okay. garnering vote. That's it. But it Rana is only Rana, for them. I'm, I'm looking at some yeah. data. And it's very interesting because uh, uh, in bipolar states in which the Congress and the BJP are main competitors, uh, the gap between the two parties has widened considerably since 2009. And BJP has received nearly half of the OBC votes in 2004-2009 and the Congress won approximately 40%. And the OBC vote for the BJP in 2014 and 2019 increased to nearly two-third, while it declined for the Congress to roughly one-fourth in these states. So as far as the OBC politics is concerned, how do you look at that playing out in the immediate elections? Uh, Maria, the question of uh, the answer of your question would be, if you see the nature of OBC politics in India, it has remained always a non-Congress domain. Hmm. It's anti-Congress. If you remember the, the socialist age, when Ramanur Lohia was trying to mobilize OBC, the emergence of OBC politics in India is anti-Congress, non-Congress domain. So, uh, so it's a very difficult for Congress to enter in that. And on the other hand, they are trying hard. They are making it a, it is a big uh, issue in this election. On the other hand, BJP is coming in this election with, with a, a galaxy of OBC leaders who are coming from different linguistic zones. They have double privilege. Uh, one as a OBC born leaders, other as a develop developmentalist. Thirdly, the social welfare schemes who are beyond uh, working beyond caste. Uh, so you know that this this beneficiary communities which Congress, BJP has created since nine years, and not only they have created beneficiary, every state political party creates beneficiary, but they have transformed it in a community. 
and we evolved a beneficiary consciousness and that consciousness works with them with for the bjp uh, beyond caste uh, so obc ebc comes in that uh, beneficiary communities uh, dalit and ebc in a big way so in that way what i see that for the congress it would be very difficult to enter in the obc political realm the obc mobilizational realm, realm and the, for the bjp uh, retaining it would be a big challenge although bjp has a edge bjp has a, as i said there are four points which i narrated to you the the leadership the, the character of leadership which is all india uh, in the bjp from different linguistic zone not only hindi region leaders uh, secondly the, the double is double privilege i have born as a obc and developed leadership image social welfare schemes and narendra modi itself as a big symbol so symbolic and substantial in both way they have tried to mobilize uh, obc in their politics okay. so socialist to bjp yes. and you can see so the turn of case, the, the obc yes. mobilization you have made an interesting point there BJP. so what Not next Congress. because i agree with you that obc politics hasn't really been the foray or the domain of the congress party but because it is entering that domain smita gupta uh, would you say that it's an unpredictable space now we really do not know what will happen who will have an upper yes. hand see the thing is that i do agree that the congress at the time of the uh, uh, acceptance of the mandal commission report was opposed to it and the bjp smartly using the slogan of social engineering entered that arena and made gains over the last 30 years now the congress has realized that it you know it has lost on many fronts so it has picked up this obc card now the question is when you talk about the caste census why is the, the if they are so confident about their obc uh, support base why are they opposing the caste census re- releasing the data of the caste census which will reveal exactly how many obcs there are and not just how many obcs but what their socio economic profile is what is the socio economic profile of our dalits so that you know things can be handed out i think the bjp is scared because while uh, you know the figures were kind of muddy uh, it was all right they managed to get it but if the figures actually come out as the bihar president shows uh, the number of obcs in this country could be anything around could be around 60% and that will make it extremely difficult for the bjp to keep its upper caste vote just take the example of madhya pradesh alone people are talking a great deal about how the bjp has had three obc chief ministers but who is the chief minister who actually implemented the 27.5% reservation it was kamal nath of the congress party you know it, it all these years under so many obc chief ministers the the congress uh, the bjp didn't uh, ever implemented for fear of annoying the upper caste you know so okay. it it was eventually kamal nath who did it okay so Al- alok was to respond to that the quick response the from you and then the final word to rashid let me tell you one thing maria ram manohar loya talked about the backward classes the man who really brought it to the fore was karpuri thakur from bihar he got this implemented but his untimely death lalu yadav and nitish kumar reaped the harvest he had sown lalu went hey nitish kept himself cool and intact so he ruled for such a long but now since the obc figures are being talked about and he is a part of the 28 person in the alliance why doesn't he resign and give it to the to the caste which has the maximum representation in bihar same goes for congress in madhya pradesh why don't they project a leader from the obc caste if they are so bothered about them as their next chief ministerial candidate in there is a difference between their saying and doing on the other hand bjp says what it does we have already given birth given accommodation to 27% of obcs and we have gathered their 47 44% vote because they trust us to that level okay and in the ensuing elections this will increase further because we deliver to them 
what they expect from us. We just don't talk about it and leave it in the shelves. All right. Rashid, the final word to you. Uh, Madhya Pradesh, uh, Rajasthan, Chhattisgarh, Telangana, all these states have an important OBC factor. And uh, we have been putting out all those graphics. We have seen how, you know, the elections in, uh, particularly in Telangana, has taken a new turn this time around. Uh, when you look at the cards and, and, and uh, you know, the, the OBC pitch, the sincerity with which various political parties are approaching, uh, what are your bets? Yeah, so Maria, I think it's a very interesting proposition. Uh, uh, you know, political parties have to take risk. The Congress has taken a gamble of sorts by pitching a very, you know, high pitched uh, campaign for this uh, uh, OBC reservation, etc. See, in most states like Madhya Pradesh, Rajasthan, Chhattisgarh, the vote percentage between the BJP and Congress is evenly poised. Even a 1%, 2% difference can have huge consequences. And therefore, either in terms of OBC uh, voting or in terms of uh, upper caste voting. So, both cases, it's, it's, it is very, uh, you know, dicey for the BJP. And that's for, therefore, the BJP has not been able to take a position. The Congress, if somebody asks you a question, uh, are you for it, yes or no? Somebody say yes has a greater chance of success than the thing. Somebody saying, no, not really, maybe, etc. And not giving a yes or no answer. Okay, but when it comes to, uh, you know, sincerity, the BJP will say, yes, they have been more sincere. If anything, their politics in recent times, the new, new BJP politics has been around the OBCs. Maria, look at Karnataka election. You see, the voter is very smart. The voter is very wise. The voter knows that if there is a welfare scheme, if they are getting 500 rupees, that's fine. But if somebody is offering 700 rupees, there is a greater attraction. Therefore, I am saying, you know, what Congress is doing is something substantive. It will lead to, you know, a real kind of, you know, removing the 50% ceiling of the vision. The vision can, as, uh, you know, Svita Gupta was saying, it can go up to 60%, 70%. It is for very difficult for the government, which is at the center. And that's why the Congress was dithering when UPA was in power and when they did informally, they did cast based censor, but they did not make it public because they were in power. Here, the Congress has nothing to do. It's in opposition and perhaps at the center, it's there. It's going to be, you know, out of the bench for a long time. And second thing, it has brought them at par with many caste based parties like Samajwadi Party, uh, you know, RJD and uh, JDU, etc. in the India Alliance. So, it's a, it's a shrewd political move. Whether it will work or not, we'll get to know from these five states. All right, Rohan Gupta, Alok Bats, uh, Professor Badri Narayan, uh, Rashid and Smita, thank you so much for your time. Today we analyzed and decoded the OBC factor and of course we have seen how it is playing out. Let's see, finally we'll know about it only on 3rd of December but uh, this is your election news destination. All the news and updates uh, every day at 7.30pm only on NDTV.